Hey, so welcome to the workshop. I am Kelly with Captiva Home and today we're gonna to be starting a whole new project and we'll be using a brand new paint to me. Um, and I'd love to hear whether you've used it before and what your experience is like and things that you like and products that I should definitely try because there are so many. Um, so anyway, I'm working with Dixie Belle paint today and I'm so excited because I just became a retailer and it's been incredible so far. Um, one of the reasons that I really like it is check out this color chart. So 64 colors of incredible colors. Um, I really like all these neutrals and then I love that these are a little more vibrant. So I'm having a lot of fun playing around with them. And earlier today I actually asked you guys what you thought I should think I should do for this beauty. So we are gonna be painting it today and I offered four choices. So the first one is drop cloth. So this is a really nice um, neutral beigey color, um, very, neutral it would be great um, and then we also have driftwood so this is a nice gray really again very neutral I'm kind of going neutral with this one um, and a light gray and then we have vintage duck egg so I always love these colors um, and you guys responded really well to this one as well so this is a nice again neutral blue green um, vintage duck egg and then the last choice was hurricane so this is a darker gray and I think like I'm excited about pairing these two together. So we're going to do some blending with these on a different piece, but today we are going to stick with this vintage duck egg. And then I don't know exactly what we're going to do with the rest of it because they do have a huge lineup of complimentary products. So like these are all the different kinds of products. There's like waxes and top coats and gilding waxes, which are metallics. They also have a really cool patina line. So that changes the paint into looking like oxidized metal. Really cool. Um, and then a bunch of different waxes, stains. So I'm pumped about trying these things. And I want to do a few different products or applications on a piece like this. So it has some great details down here. I was thinking that would be really nice for either metallic paint or perhaps a gilding wax. Um, there are nice original handles and those have shined up to be a little brassy tone. Um, so I think that will be nice and I want to pick other finishes a compliment. So that's my thought process so far. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I can see them later too. So if you're watching on the replay, please jump in. Let me know what questions you have. I'd love to help you. Um, I'm still learning about all the little tips and tricks here. So we're going to do it together and it's going to be fun. Um, and, oh, you can shop either in the link, so if you're online and located elsewhere, um, you can shop online, or if you're in central Massachusetts, like I am, um, we do have a shop at Avenue C Design in Framingham, and that is a great little spot. It's open Tuesday through Sunday, 12 to 5, uh, 10 to 5, and we just moved in there this week, and it's been really nice. So you can shop Dixie Bell there, and if you have any other requests, I'd be happy to get them for you. Um, I am going to be using my Dixie Belle flat medium, so I'm pumped about this. This is a one and a half inch synthetic bristle brush. I haven't used it yet, um, but I love a one and a half inch flat brush, and I have used their other brushes. So I actually use these on, oh, my display piece. Um, so this is the oval medium. So this has a nice oval head. Um, these are the synthetic, very similar to like a Klingon brush. Um, but these are actually made in US. Um, they're really nice to hold. So I'm pretty excited about these as well. And then this is the Synthetic Mini. So this is another really great size brush. Um, but since I don't have any awkward angles, I thought I'd break in the flat medium instead because I want to try it. So I do have my little cup. Um, and gosh, my things are doing weird stuff. Um, so I'm going to pour out a little bit. I never like to work out of the container um, because if you are picking up anything, any contaminants here and then dipping back into your container and then you seal it up and come back to it in a little while, um, you could potentially um, introduce some bacteria that doesn't work well with the paint as it's been stored. So I like to work out of these little containers. Um, and if you're looking for these, it, all of these supplies are on our supply list, which is linked in the documents. And you can grab, oh, you can't even see it, sorry. Uh, this is the little containers that I use all the time. So let me know who's watching. I can't even tell right now. Um, 
if you have any questions, um, if you want to share this, I would be super appreciative um, because that is how we reach new people. And so this piece has already been prepped. So it looks like the original finish, but it's not. Um, it was actually alligator severely. So what that is, is um, a shellac old world finish that's failing. Um, so we had to remove all of that. And then we prepped it. You can see down here, we did some fillings of a couple little chips. Um, there is some work that needs to be done on the interior, but that can happen after the fact. Um, and then sealed it up, scuffed it, so now it's ready for paint. So I'm gonna get right into it with the vintage duck egg. And one of the things that I really like about this paint is the coverage. And when you pair it with these synthetic bristles um, that are damp, so I did wet my brush, I don't know if you guys saw that. Um, it really helps the coverage and I will show you in just a minute. You gotta make sure to get these legs while you're thinking about it um, because they are so easy to overlook. And then at the end of the project, you turn around and realize that you never painted one of the legs. So that can be super frustrating. So I like to make sure that I get those first. And this piece does have all these like cute little wheels. So I think that's a great feature. Um, I think they're adorable. And it is a little bit petite. So I, this will be a great piece for like a little girl's room or, you know, if you have an awkward spot. So that's why I want to make sure that it's nice and neutral. Um, and look at that coverage. You'll be able to see better on the flat panels. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit more water. Dixie Belle is a water-based paint. So if you find that it is too thick, you can add a little bit more water and then that will uh, help it level out a little bit more, um, help it glide more. And that's with any water-based paint. So have you guys used Dixie Belle paint before? Um, do you have any favorite colors or any favorite products that I should be trying? Um, I got a bunch of them and then I'll be ordering a lot more um, so that I can try everything. Really excited about the patina paints, um, all the different colors. This one I was pumped about. And then Stormy Seas, I think that's gonna be a really nice one as well. It's a little bit deeper of a kind of a gray teal. But the coverage on this is incredible. So depending what kind of finish you're looking for, you could almost get away with one coat coverage. Um, up close, you can see that there are a little bit of spots that need some more, there's a little bit of like brush strokes, um, but that will settle out. And then like if you're gonna be distressing heavily, you could just kind of go with this. So I really like how flexible the paint is. And I love that now you guys can order from my link and have it delivered anywhere. So I think that'll be really cool. That's always one of the struggles is I'm talking about stuff and then you can't get it or you live too far away. So the Dixie Belle link up there, um, you can shop and there's a full product line um, and then have it delivered to your home. And it does support my small business. So that's always nice too. So with these little legs, I like to kind of go around and there we go. Um, kind of drag around it. I think that works better than going verticals on a spindly leg like this. Just want to make sure that I get it covered everywhere. You guys are awfully quiet. So let me know if you have any questions. Again, I am Kelly with Captiva Home. Um, today, oh, and I'm based in Berlin, Mass. We just opened a new shop in Framingham, Mass, which is about 20 minutes from us. Um, and then we do sell Dixie Bell paint there. So we're using Dixie Bell paint today and updating this piece in Vintage Duck Egg, which is a really nice blue, obviously. Um, and then, so in here, that's a great detail for maybe a glaze or a wax, so I want to do something in there. Um, and then we have some nice raised details, so I'm not sure exactly where this is gonna go, but I do want to use a few different 
products or techniques to really experiment. Um, I'm just getting into the Dixie Belle, but I really, really like it. And it's got all the things that I like in a paint. So, we will be learning together. Um, if you have any questions or tips or tricks or anything that you want to know about, please let me know and we can explore that together. Um, here, I hate painting with the drawers in, but for the sake of the video, I'll do that real quick. And in my design process, one of the things that's actually throwing me off is this flat drawer. So the rest of them, like this has a lot of great details, there's some details there, and then this drawer is just flat. So I'm not sure exactly how to incorporate that and make it look beautiful. And in this case, typically you would paint um, horizontally for a drawer, but the veneer is actually applied vertically. So that's why I'm painting up and down here, even though that's not a typical um, application. And if you are watching on the replay, I can still see all your comments. And I know this is a weird time of day. Um, I think it's like, yeah, it's one o'clock on a Wednesday. So a lot of people are probably working or doing something else. Um, but I had some time, so it makes sense. So I know a lot of you will be watching on the re replay. Please pop in with questions, um, share this if you find it helpful. Uh, and I can still see all of your questions and help you out with whatever you need. And I'm going to move this real quick. Um, and then, yeah, blue, this is the vintage duck egg blue. So if you're just joining, we did a few different colors. Um, I had a couple options of drop cloth, which is a really nice neutral beige. Um, and then this is hurricane, nope, it's not. This is driftwood, this is a nice light gray. So this would also be beautiful. And I might even use this for a little bit of dry brushing or the drop cloth. And then hurricane gray, which is a nice like deeper gray. So this, any of those would be great on this piece, but it is kind of a smaller scale dresser. So I thought it might work well for a little girl's room potentially. And I want to make sure that it was very pretty and kind of, I don't know, I'm thinking like Beauty and the Beast fell, something like that. So that's where I'm going with it. And I wanted to use a neutral color so that I could also accent the deep spots with a little bit of shading and then the high spots with a little bit of highlighting of some sort. So I don't know whether that's dry brushing or um, glazing or both. So we're gonna see, I'm not sure where this project's going, but I'm gonna share it with you guys live. So it'll be fun. Oop, drop my brush. So this is my new brush. Um, this is the flat medium. So far I like it a lot. Um, I'm so glad you guys could watch at lunch. I think that's fantastic. Um, I just had lunch too. So what I'm gonna do here, when you have a raised area like this and you're kind of thinking about your plan for the piece, one of the ways you can preview what it's gonna look like is kind of while you're painting to do a little bit of dry brushing. And this will tell you where your high spots are, which in this case, it's pretty obvious. Um, but if you had like a lot of different um, levels, of the carving, that'll really help you figure out which places are the highest and which are the lowest and what that might look like if you were to accent the medallion with something else. So one of the things I'm considering is doing this maybe white at the end um, or dry brushing that. So that kind of gives me an idea of what it might look like. I also am thinking that that's kind of bold for there's nowhere else where that's tied in well. So I don't know if that's gonna work. But that's my thought process. Um, I do not like painting with the drawers intact, but for purposes of the video, it makes sense. Uh, I will be coming in later and doing some touch-up. So one of the reasons that I don't like painting with the drawers in is that you can't get like these areas and that makes it a little more difficult. Um, and then you have to come back in and touch it up. So that's why I always take them out. Um, I did just mist my brush because that helps your paint level, level, level out a little better. And with the water-based paint and the water-based, I mean, um, these synthetic bristle brushes, that really helps your paint level out if it's a little bit looser. 
And that also helps with the open time. Although Dixie Belle has really good open time, which means it doesn't dry super fast, which is something that I like. Um, other folks prefer paints that dry really fast. I like ones that have a little bit more open time so that you can really manipulate it and get it where you want it to be before it starts drying on you. Um, if it was a quick drying paint, this would already be dry and I wouldn't be able to alter it. So that is one of the reasons I like this. And the coverage, it really looks great. So two coats for sure will be enough on this. Um, I could even do one coat if, you know, depending what kind of finish I was going after. So have you guys used this Dixie Belle yet? I know it's very popular. Um, I hadn't for whatever reason, and then I got some recently, and I liked it so much that we actually became a retailer. So we'll be talking about this a lot. And one of the greatest things is there are so many colors. So look at all these colors that we can play with. This is gonna be so fun. And then they also have a ton of different products that are complimentary or waxes or polyacrylics, um, gilding waxes, gel stains. There's a ton of different options to play with. And that is another thing that I really like about different paint lines when I'm considering them. And in here, I'm just making sure that I get into everywhere. And if you find that the paint isn't really spreading out as nicely, uh, you could add a little bit more water and then get into those like really deep places like this crevice. And that way, it's not so thick. And you can make sure that those areas get covered. And I like to make sure on my base coat that I really get in everywhere. Um, because on the second coat, or the last coat, it's gonna be more obvious if you have like stray brush strokes. But here, you can really have a little bit more flexibility. So I'm glad you love, Marianne loves Dixie Belle. I do too, I'm really pumped about it. Um, I was, I actually went on vacation last week, so I haven't been able to play with it as much as I'd like. Um, but so far, I'm really excited. So look at that coverage. That took no time at all, and that is very well covered. Like I said, I will get the um, sides another time. These videos make it tough to paint and talk sometimes, but it's okay. So with here, I'm going to actually take these out, because I think that'll be easier to paint. And what do you guys think I should do for accent colors? I think this is a great accent piece. There's also one on the mirror, so I can kind of like tie it in to each other. Um, so I think those will get some kind of either metallic work or maybe gilding wax. And what gilding wax is, is a metallic wax and it is metallic, uh, really easy to use. It go, a little bit goes a long way. So you can actually apply it like with your finger and then I can't see this. Sorry. We'll back here. Um, and it offers a really nice shimmer shine. Um, if you look at the caviar dresser, which is the black that I did last two weeks ago, um, it has a really nice metallic bow that I use the warm gold with, and it looks really cool. It's also great for hardware. So one of the colors that I'm considering for that gilding wax, oh gosh, I'm dropping everything today. Sorry. Um, so anyway, this is the gilding wax. It comes in this tiny little tub, but all you need is just a little bit. So this is a warm gold and I'll apply it with my finger or a brush and you just kind of rub it in and it accents, especially carved like high spots. I find it really good to use there. You can also use it on your hardware. So what it'll probably do is add a little bit to the hardware and that will help tie in what I have going on. So that's my thought process. There are so many different options when you're painting that sometimes that can be overwhelming or the hardest part is just deciding like what to do. 
So, just kind of walking you through my head. And I would love to see, if you guys have any Dixie Belle projects that you've done, I would love to see some examples. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I can't even see who's watching, but I do appreciate it so much. Oh, and let me know, is this a decent time for you guys? I was thinking about doing some more daytime lives. Um, but I don't know whether it would be better to go like in the morning or afternoon. We are on the East Coast. Um, I do live in Massachusetts, so I know that does factor into, you know, where other folks can watch from. So like if I did a 9 a.m., it'd probably be like 6 a.m. for California. That might be kind of tough. Um, but let me know if you'd like to see like what times would work well for you. I usually do like seven o'clock at night, but it's getting tough with our little toddlers. So we have a three and a five year old and um, you know, that's bedtime. So that's a little bit tough. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So when you're painting these, I do like to paint in a bit because with these inset drawers, sometimes they fall in and if you just see like a little sliver of unpainted wood, that drives me crazy. Um, so what I actually do is paint in until I find a logical stopping point. So this piece of wood ends right there, about an inch and a half in. Yeah. Um, so that is where I'll paint up to. And that just gives me a nice clean line. And if the drawer happens to sink in or it sits a little funny, then it is covered. So I think that's an important little feature. And here we go. And this table is super handy. So if you guys are painters, I highly recommend getting something that is a little bit elevated makes it much easier than painting on the ground constantly. Or the little furniture dollies that I use on some of the taller pieces, really nice. Uh, those really help to move it around and let you get the angles that you need. So. So one of the things I like about this kind of color is that it's so neutral, but it actually works really well with both silvers and gold colors, and actually coppers too. So the hardware is brassy gold. Um, what would you do for accent colors? Do you think we should stay with the kind of golden tones of the handles and take a cue from that? Or silver? because I do have this uh, metallic silver paint as well. So this looks pretty light and silvery. Um, the Dixie Belle actually has metallic paint and you do a base coat and then a top coat. So that's different. Um, and that should really help with opaqueness. And you can see the top coat is much shinier. You're not gonna be able to see that at all, but trust me, it is. Um, so we could do silvers. Um, or I have that gray gold gilding wax. So I'm not quite sold on that yet. Um, I do love this color with the silver, but I think with the hardware factor, the going with the gold tones might be a more logical choice. So, oh, you're in Massachusetts? Um, fantastic. We are located, so our workshop, where I am today, is located in Berlin, Mass, which is a tiny town and there's nothing here, um, but it's very close to everything else. Um, so our shop is actually located in Framingham, Mass, which is a much, um, I don't know, bigger place. Uh, so that is about 20 minutes from here. It's half an hour outside of Boston, right off of 190. 
really easy to get to. Uh, so that's where our shop is, and it's at Ave Avenue C Design in Framingham. It's this gorgeous farm. Um, they have like ice cream in the summer, and they have a bunch of little shops. Um, we're part of one that it has a few vendors. So we have a space there with our Dixie Bell paint, our furniture, and signs, and all kinds of other like, you know, stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, sometimes I paint the hardware. I haven't found a way that I really love yet. So I try to avoid painting the hardware. Um, I do use Rub and Buff to do like accents. But at this point, I figured out that it's either um, better to replace it or um, try to keep it kind of consistent with its original look and then use like a gilding wax to accent it. So I don't like spray painting them. Uh, this is, I know, the coverage is fantastic. So this is Dixie Belle Vintage Duck Egg paint. Um, and it's really going on beautifully. So this is a nice neutral color, very similar to that Persian blue or duck egg that I like, I always like. Um, so, I mean, in no time, I painted that dresser. The coverage is really good. Um, it will need another coat, but depending on the look you're going for, um, it could just be left like that. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is some kind of accenting. So I'm not sure exactly what. We've been talking about either going with silvers or golds. Um, I do have this building wax, it's a warm gold. So I think I'll probably use this on the hardware. Um, right now it's really dirty and gross, but I know I had it's a similar piece and it shines up to a nice brassy color. So then adding a little bit of this warm gold on the hardware and then probably using it, I might use it on this little detail. And then the mirror has a very similar detail like that. So I think that would help to kind of bring them together. Um, or, or maybe and, I'm not sure. Um, we could use drop cloth. So this is a nice neutral white. Um, I also have all the other whites, uh, white, cotton, no, fluff. They have a ton of different colors. So these are all the different colors. Um, I believe it's 64. And I really like these neutrals and over here. Um, and then the bold colors are gonna be a lot of fun too. So I'm having a blast with this. Um, thank you so much for joining. I am Kelly with Captiva Home. Please let me know what questions you have. Um, if you wanna shop for Dixie Bell stuff, you can um, check out the link in the notes and then it can be delivered right to your door. If you're located in the Massachusetts area, we do have a shop in Framingham, Mass at Avenue C Design, 1062 Edmonds Road, or you can contact me and we can figure something out. So anyway, we're gonna be talking a lot more about Dixie Bell, but I wanted to show you this project real quick. So thank you and have a great day.